Why is it dangerous for us to engage in sexual immorality? And why is it considered a sin? When we engage in sexual immorality, like having sex outside of marriage, cheating, or thinking about sex in harmful ways, it can lead to lots of problems. First off, it can really hurt our relationships with others and with God. It can mess up trust and cause a lot of pain. Plus, there are health risks, like getting sick from sexually transmitted diseases. But beyond that, it's considered a sin because it goes against what God wants for us. He made sex to be something special and meaningful, something that's supposed to bring people closer together in marriage. When we do things that aren't right with sex, it's like we're not respecting God's plan for us. That's why it's seen as a big deal and something to be careful about. Sexual immorality, such as adultery, fornication, and lust, is often depicted in the Bible as a tool used by the devil to destroy our lives and lead us away from God's intended path. In 1 Corinthians 6.18, it says, Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. This verse highlights the seriousness of sexual sin and its damaging effects on both body and soul. The devil uses our weaknesses and desires to lure us into sinful behaviors that separate us from God's love and plan for our lives. Ephesians 5.3 also warns us, but among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality, or of any kind of impurity, or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Here, we're reminded of the importance of maintaining purity in our actions and thoughts, as indulging in sexual immorality can corrupt our hearts and lead us away from living in accordance with God's will. Thus, it's crucial to resist the temptations of sexual sin, and seek God's strength and guidance to overcome such destructive influences in our lives. Before we go any further on this topic, I pray that your hearts are open to receive this difficult message. If you know someone that needs to hear this message, please share it with them. This sin is one of the most powerful weapons the devil is using to deceive and trap us. If you receive value from the video, please consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Leaving a like will spread the message to more people. Engaging in sexual immorality can have serious spiritual consequences, leading to distance from God and hindering our relationship with Him. In Galatians 5, 19 through 21, it says, The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. This verse emphasizes that those who persist in sexual immorality and other sinful behaviors will face spiritual consequences, ultimately being separated from God's kingdom. Additionally, sexual sin can lead to feelings of guilt, shame, and spiritual emptiness, creating barriers between us and God's love and forgiveness. Thus, it's essential to seek repentance and turn away from sexual immorality to restore our spiritual well-being and draw closer to God's grace and mercy. When we sin against God, especially through sexual immorality, it upsets Him because it goes against His plan for us. In Ephesians 4.30 it says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. This verse reminds us that our actions, including sexual sin, can grieve the Holy Spirit, who dwells within believers. When we engage in sexual immorality, we go against God's will and dishonor His presence within us. It causes sorrow and displeasure to the Holy Spirit, who desires our purity and obedience. Therefore, by indulging in sexual sin, we not only disobey God's commands, but also hurt the relationship we have with Him. It's essential to recognize the weight of our actions and strive to live in a way that brings joy to the Holy Spirit, honoring the seal of redemption we have received through Christ.
Living with a boyfriend or girlfriend before marriage, often referred to as cohabitation, is considered fornication in the eyes of God, which is a sin. Remembering what 1 Corinthians 6.18 says, flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. This verse highlights the seriousness of sexual sin, including fornication, which dishonors our bodies, which are temples of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 5, it further emphasizes, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Living together before marriage disregards God's design for sexual intimacy within the commitment of marriage and can lead to temptation and compromise of moral values. Therefore, it's important to honor God's commandments and wait until marriage to engage in sexual relations, thereby preserving the sanctity of marriage and honoring God's will for our lives. Fornication, which includes any sexual activity outside of marriage, distorts God's design for sexuality as outlined in the Bible. In Genesis 2.24, it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. This verse illustrates God's intention for sexual intimacy to occur within the sacred bond of marriage, where two individuals become one. Fornication goes against this design by engaging in sexual relations outside of marriage, leading to fragmentation rather than the unity that God intended. Additionally, 1 Corinthians 6.16 states, Or do you not know that he who is joined to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. This verse emphasizes that sexual activity outside of marriage still has profound implications, uniting individuals in a way that conflicts with God's plan. Therefore, fornication distorts the beautiful and sacred union that God intended for sexuality within the confines of marriage, leading to consequences that deviate from His design for our lives. In today's culture, there's often a normalization of sex outside of marriage, leading many to believe it's acceptable behavior. However, according to the Bible, sex outside of marriage remains a sin. Romans 12.2 do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good pleasing and perfect will. This verse urges believers not to adopt the attitudes and behaviors of the world around them, but to align themselves with God's will. Despite cultural norms, Hebrews 13.4 clearly states, Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. This passage emphasizes the importance of honoring the sanctity of marriage and keeping sexual relations confined within its bounds. Thus, even though society may normalize sex outside of marriage, it remains a sin in the eyes of God, and believers are called to uphold His standards rather than conforming to cultural influences. Sex is meant to be saved for marriage, according to the teachings of the Bible. In 1 Corinthians 7, 2 it says, But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife, and each woman her own husband. This verse emphasizes that sexual relations are intended to occur within the context of marriage, where two individuals commit to each other in a lifelong union. Waiting until marriage to engage in sexual intimacy honors God's design for sexuality and strengthens the bond between husband and wife. Additionally, saving sex for marriage avoids the physical, emotional, and spiritual consequences that can arise from engaging in sexual activity outside of its intended purpose. By following this biblical principle, individuals uphold the sanctity of marriage and demonstrate obedience to God's commands regarding sexual purity. Sexual immorality is harmful and risky, 
often leading to physical, emotional, and spiritual consequences. Engaging in sexual activity outside of marriage can increase the risk of sexually transmitted infections, STIs, unintended pregnancies, and emotional trauma. In addition, it can damage trust and intimacy within relationships, leading to feelings of guilt, shame, and regret. Therefore, the best course of action is to remain abstinent until marriage, following God's design for sexuality. By waiting until marriage to engage in sexual activity, individuals can avoid the harmful consequences of sexual immorality and honor God's plan for their lives. As followers of Christ, we are called to live lives of purity and holiness, abstaining from sexual immorality and guarding our speech and behavior. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 3-5, it says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. This verse reminds us of God's desire for us to live pure and honorable lives, free from the passions of lust and immorality. Additionally, Ephesians 4.29 advises, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. This verse highlights the importance of guarding our speech and ensuring that our words are edifying and uplifting to others. By living in accordance with these biblical principles, we not only honor God, but also serve as positive examples to those around us, reflecting the love and righteousness of Christ in all that we do. In summary, sexual immorality, such as engaging in sex outside of marriage, is considered harmful and goes against God's plan for human sexuality as outlined in the Bible. Scriptures emphasize the importance of purity, holiness, and honoring God's commands regarding sexual behavior. Living a life of abstinence until marriage not only aligns with God's design, but also promotes physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. By seeking strength through prayer, guarding our speech and behavior, and following biblical principles, individuals can resist temptation and live in a way that pleases God, fostering healthy relationships and reflecting the love and righteousness of Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts burdened by the struggles of sexual immorality that we face in our lives and in our world. We acknowledge that in moments of weakness, we often falter and stray from the path of purity that you have set before us. We ask for your forgiveness for the times we have succumbed to temptation and failed to honor your plan for sexuality. Lord, we pray for increased awareness of the dangers of sexual immorality and the strength to resist its allure. Help us to recognize the value and sanctity of our bodies, which you have created in your image. Grant us wisdom to discern right from wrong and the courage to stand firm in our convictions, even when faced with temptation. May your Holy Spirit guide us and empower us to lean on you in times of weakness. Fill us with your grace and strength so that we may overcome the desires of the flesh and live according to your will. Help us to find refuge in you, knowing that in our weakness, your power is made perfect. Lord, we surrender our struggles with sexual immorality to you, trusting in your unfailing love and mercy. Renew our hearts and minds and lead us on the path of purity and righteousness. May our lives be a testament to your grace and the transforming power of your love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for watching the video to the end. If you feel encouraged or blessed, please consider subscribing to the channel. This simple action helps the channel grow and shows kindness. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.